Okay. What's uh what's the best approach for answering questions like these? Okay. So how do you want to start something like this? What's the unit I'm trying to find? Yeah, so I'm looking for a volume unit. So I just look over here at what I've got. I've got a liter, I've got a pressure, and I got a pressure. So I'm looking for a volume unit, so that's gonna be liters. So what do I start with? So I'll put a 12.3 liters here. All right, so now I have to figure out what this change in pressure will do to the volume of this gas, the size of this gas. So the pressure was at 40 millimeters of mercury and we increase it to 60. So what would that do? Lower the volume. Lower the volume. Okay. Yeah, it would, it would shrink it, right? It would crush it. So this thing needs to get smaller. So what do I do with my two pressure units? Put the small one on top. All right. So I'll have a 40 here and a 60 here and the millimeters of mercury will cancel each other out. And then I just have a liter unit. And what's that work out to be? Anybody have that? Say again? 8.2. That sounds good. Okay. So I've got a volume unit and I've got uh, a smaller value for volume than I started with, so that makes sense. So I've got a gas at 25 degrees Celsius, 3.6 liters and a pressure of one atmosphere. What will be its volume at uh, this different pressure? So this is pretty much the same question with a little bit of like, let's see if I can trick them, right? And what's that have to do with? This, this temperature doesn't change at all, so it's just out of the equation completely. I'm looking for another volume thing, so I'm going to go ahead and go with this liter. So I'll write 3.6 liters here. And then um, same situation. I've got one atmosphere that's going to two and a half atmospheres. So this gas is going to be smaller. Um, One point four. Okay. All right. So this time I've got a volume, a temperature. I want to know a volume, and I have a new temperature. Okay. So what do I need to do first with these? Change Kelvin. Yeah, change them to Kelvin. And so I'm looking for a volume, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the 600 milliliters here. And what happens to the temp? Goes up. So if I increase the temperature of a gas, what's going to happen to the volume of the gas? It's also going to go up. So I'm going to take these two numbers, I'm going to put the bigger one on top. So I get 692 uh, milliliters. Does that make sense? Should have got bigger, got bigger. Sam? It's not, it doesn't have a negative. Why do you have to convert it to um, what's the uh, What's the difference? the actual factor difference between 20 and 60? Three. So 60 is three times larger than 20, right? What's the actual factor difference between 297 and 333? Not three. So it's not just the fact that there's a negative sign. It's the fact that it's not um, the Celsius temperature scale isn't the temperature. It's a modified version of what the actual temperature is. The temperature is actually the Kelvin number. So when I say it's 20 degrees Celsius, it's 
not really 20 degrees Celsius as far as the gas is concerned. It's 293 degrees Kelvin. Basically, it's because it's offset by the number 273. So any changes in the Celsius makes it look much uh, uh, like a much greater change in temperature than it actually is. Um, pretty much the same problem with this one, right? Starting with the volume, going to go to a new volume. I've got a temperature. I'm going to go to a new temperature. And the temp again is going to go up. So 273 here, 300K. And so 900 milliliters. And since the temp went up, I'll put the bigger number of this 405 here. And 300 down here. Determine the pressure change when a constant volume of gas at one atmosphere is heated from 20 to 30. So 273, 293, 273, 303, K, K. And I start at one atmosphere. And I want to know my new atmospheric pressure. And I'm heating this from 20 to 30. So what's going to happen to the pressure of a gas that gets heated up? Increase. It's going to increase. So I'll put my 303 number here and my 293 number here. And I get 1.03 atmospheres. So it didn't go up a lot, but it went up. All right, um, so how do I, uh, what do I do to go to the other side for the single replacement reaction? What gets swapped out? Okay, so the two metals switch places. And what's the, so I'll have my manganese here. And what do I have on this other side? Oops. Er. C, D, what? C, D, O. Good. So this thing is, uh, um, how come it's just C, D, O? Oxides are insoluble. Why is it CDO? The oxidation number for cadmium is just, there's only one and it's a plus two. So then you just need one cadmium and one oxygen. Okay. Um, Well, that doesn't seem right. Oh, I'm not talking about the state. Yeah, we're not ba done balancing this. Uh, I can't. Yeah, I can do that though. So I'll just put a two there, and a seven there, and a seven there, and we're balanced. Okay. Um. This would react if it was at a high enough temperature. If I start with 243 grams of copper and 275 grams of silver chloride, how many moles of each product will be made? So this is basically just a railroad track question, but um, the difference is I want you to stop before you get to the grams because it asks for just the mole part. So what's this reaction look like?
So 243 here, 275 here. Okay, so 243 grams of Cu. One mole Cu. Oh, this is imbalanced. Need a two here and a two there. Um, this is 63 plus 1. 5, 4, 6. What? You're saying no to me. Um, one mole CU and then one mole of uh, CUCL2 and then that was it that's all I was asking about go with uh, one mole sorry I don't know how many moles yet I gotta do the math CUCL2 and then I'll do 275 grams of AGCL and for every one mole AGCL so my silver is 107.8682 plus 35.8 Four five three times two, so I get uh, one hundred and seventy eight point seven seven four AUCL, and then for every two mole AUCL, sorry AGCL, I get one mole CUCL two mole CUCL two, so two seventy five divided by that one seventy eight. Divided by two. So I got uh, 0.77 here. And for the first one, 243. Divided by 63.546. 3.8. So what do I know right now? The top one's incorrect, yeah. I'm never gonna make 3.8 moles of my copper two chloride because the moment I've made um, 0.77 moles, I run out of uh, silver chloride. So then the question is how much of the silver am I gonna make? So it doesn't look like I left you very much room here. So uh, let's do this. That's weird. So 275 grams of silver chloride, one mole silver chloride, 178.724 grams silver chloride. And then uh, there's two moles of silver chloride, and then two moles of silver. And I got 1.5 mole Cu sale too. So those are the moles of the product that I'm going to have. I'm going to take the combined gas law and solve it for T2. Okay, so P1, V1, T1 equals P2, V2, T2. And I'm going to solve it for T2. Right, so T2 is equal to... 
P2V2 T1 divided by P1 V1. What's the final volume of 300 milliliters sample of gas that is subjected to a temperature change and a pressure change? Okay, so what am I looking for in this problem? A volume, I'm given one volume and then I'm given a temperature increase and I'm given a pressure decrease. So 270, 273 here, five, eight, Two Kelvin, seven three, uh, three two three Kelvin, and so I'm going to start with three hundred milliliters, and the temp goes up. So what would that do to the size of my gas? Make it go up. So I'm going to take my big number, my three twenty three K here, and my two eighty five K, and put that on the bottom, and then they both cancel out, and then my pressure change. It's a low pressure or a high pressure and goes to a low pressure. So if I remove pressure to a like size of gas, what would happen to the size of the gas? It gets bigger. Okay, so I need to put my 750 millimeter mercury here and my 360 millimeter mercury here. And that cancels out. And so 300 times 285. Two, two, times 750 divided by 360 plus 708 milliliters. Does that make sense that the volume got a lot bigger? It got bigger because it got warmer and it's not being crushed, being squished less. Okay. Um, the pressure of a gas reduced from Thousand to 750 millimeters worker has a volume container as the volume of the container is increased by moving a piston. Okay, what's the final temperature of this gas? Alrighty, so I want to know what the final temp is, and I have an initial temp of 110, so 273 here, so 383 Kelvin. So I'm going to start with that 383K, and I've got a the pressure of the gas is reduced. So since the gas pressure goes down, what's that gonna do? How are those two related to each other? Pressure down and temperature. Are we okay with that? They're directly related to each other. If the pressure went down, then the temperature uh, would have also gone down. So I'm gonna put the 750 millimeter mercury up top and 1,000 millimeter mercury on the bottom to make that Kelvin number smaller. Um, the volume of the container is increased by moving a piston from 75 to 320 milliliters. So how are temperature and volume related to each other? If the volume got bigger, what must have happened with the temperature? It must have gone up. The volume got bigger. If I've got an object of gas and it's this big and I take and the, uh, the volume of the gas got bigger, but and it was related to temperature. How did that happen? What would the temperature have need to have done to make the thing get bigger? Um, so three hundred and twenty milliliters and seventy five milliliters. So three eighty three times seven fifty divided by a thousand times three twenty divided by 75. So it looks like one, two, five, zero, K. Nine fifty three degrees Celsius. Uh, on a standardized test, like NCLEX or Procalc or something like that, they're, they're going to expect you to report an answer in the same units that you were given in the beginning of the problem. So I guarantee you, if this was a multiple choice question, 
A's answer would be uh, 1,250, and B's answer would be 1,225, and, or, and 42, and then um, D's answer would be 953, and the answer is 953. Are we okay with that? Does everybody understand what I mean by that? Just trying to get you to not report in the same. Basically, if somebody tells you something in a medical situation in one unit, they're totally expecting you to answer them with the same unit. So if somebody says, you know, the temperature is 36 and a half Celsius, they don't want an answer coming back that says they're 98.5. They want it to say Celsius. They want everybody to be on the same page. You're going to lose points if you don't. Yeah. All right. So temperature of a sample of gas in a steel container is 50 kilopascals is increased to 130 degrees Celsius from negative 138 degrees Celsius to, okay, what's the final pressure inside the tank? Okay, so 273, all right, 273, three, four, uh, one, okay. And uh, this is 2100 zero, zero Celsius, 273, and. Okay. Um, final pressure. So 50 kilopascals. And the temp went up dramatically. So I'll put my big number up top and my little number on the bottom. And then I'll get a kilopascals value 50 times 2373. Divided by 143, and we get uh, 830. Yeah, 830. 